announcement from the 1970s. Remember that one? Uh, think once, think twice, think bike. I'm making the doing the stream tonight indoors because it's it's brass monkey weather out there and it's just so cold. So I'm doing it here. Hopefully the cats will behave themselves. Now this video is about things I've been thinking about all day, but I've probably ever since the the pandemic began and you started watching my videos uh, dealing with this topic now you know it's it, it I keep coming look I'm not a political commentator I'm I don't even like politics uh, politically I'm definitely an anarchist I believe the government really shouldn't have too much power and um, it truly should be an administrative body and the reason why I would support Trump in a time like this is because he represents a correctional force. We've moved too far to the left and it's uh, it's time to push back from that. And because it's towards the center, uh, basically the people who call Trump, you know, a right wing Nazi, whatever they call him. Trump's policies are basically JFK Democrat from the 19, early 1960s. Uh, it's just that we've moved so far to the left. Uh, you know, we were the way round as it was in the eighties. We went too far to the right with the Clinton, you know, Reaganomics and, you know, free liberal market economics. It was probably a good thing to pull it back to the left. So, but that's 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 my that's the only reason. It's not. I don't have a. I don't have any political feelings towards this. That, that, that that's not even in my. You know, not even in my world. Now. So I tend to see things like the coronavirus pandemic as spiritual, psychological, cultural in that sense. And that's, this is the, that's the thing that interests me, on, though I'm very interested in the science of things like that. And uh, I, like I, I've told you, I'm not, I have no problem with vaccines. I'm not an anti-vaxxer. It's just that this one here has been rushed out so quickly, assuming they didn't plan this years ago and they already had the, fix, the vaccine fixed and ready to go. But, you know, for, for adequate testing of vaccines, you really need intergenerational and hereditary feedback. That's mothers, you know, who have had, had a vaccine, then have children to make sure it's okay with the next generation and so on. That's why, you know, I'm not telling anyone how to live her life. I know if I was a woman who was facing pregnancy or interest in having a baby, I'd be very wary about taking that vaccine. But that's your choice, not mine. I don't, I don't tell people how to live their lives. Now... Uh, regarding the spiritual aspects of all this, well, I was talking to a friend today, and we we're both feeling. And said, "Do you feel the same? I feel like you are held down at the moment. Like there was a huge weight on you, a, a t intense feeling, like you're carrying a sack of coal on your back all the time. And it's like she described it as being that, that they'd release sleeping gas on us, and." Uh, yeah, I have been feeling like that in the last few days. And in fact, a lot of times during this whole pandemic, so have I felt this way. And so have many of you of you others have said that things like that. You feel like if you, you started out at the beginning of 2020 as a young person and now you feel like an old man or woman because of what's gone down. Well, there's a reason for this, I think. And I'm going to talk about this in the spiritual in terms but also, uh, you'll f I hope you find this interesting if you know you're not a spiritual, a spiritual minded person. Now, I've absolutely no doubt that reality is changing. The, when I say a parallel society, I'm not talking necessarily in metaphor. I literally mean that. That if you split, you know, you you split yourself from a from a conscious engagement with the. Uh, the prevailing orthodoxy you actually build a new reality and we've all done this in our lives think of all the marriages or relationships you were in or the jobs you were in that were coming to an end and you're planning to leave and before you ended this relationship or walk out of this company you had a disengage from the uh, the the sense of entrapment that had upon you and you changed as a person and not only did your relationship with the person you were leaving change, but also your relationship with the company and how the, the people you worked with or whatever, you were emigrating, it's a very common feeling. And you, you feel amazing because you feel like a burden is being lifted. And the irony of that is people start start finding you at your most likable and attractive, you know? And uh, because you're finally facing your dharma, you're being who you're meant to be. 
And as you face this dharma, you grow as a person, your charisma gen generally just explodes out of you. And then these people feel, find out that you're leaving them or going away. And that has, you know, very negative consequences for these people because they've seen you flourish and then you're gone. You know, because you've sort of given up any kind of um, neuro neurotic attachments to the uh, the pathology of the situation. Now, that's kind of what's happening with us at the moment. Now, you know, peep, you know, you see the comments in these videos, and everyone says the same thing. Uh, I, 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 look, I, people have changed. You know. You can show them those TikTok videos of what when we were being at the height of, at the height of when the pandemic was supposed to be at its worst, and they were saying things like hospitals are war zones, re resembling something from you know, uh, a, a, an aftermath of a bombing in World War Two, an urban bombing, and then all we saw was TikTok videos of staff dancing and doing complex routines that needed to be worked out. Now you and I and the people who watched this video saw that, and we, we immediately the first thing that popped in our mind was. There's no pandemic. There's no emergency. Now that's what I say. There was no COVID nineteen. But there was, and people, a lot of people did die. They most, you know, mostly in elderly homes. But that was it. That that was, that was the thing that they, they were. The media was completely lying to everybody, completely lying. And so we had to deal with that. Now, when you showed that to one of what we call a normie, they went like, hmm, hmm, hmm. Like they, they just could not deal with it. It was like you were showing them. It, it reminds me of the famous stories of when the Spanish first went to Central America and they showed a painting of the King of Spain to the Mayans. And the Mayans looked at the picture and saw nothing. And then after like a couple of days, one of them said, oh, I kind of see a man's eye. And then the other one go, oh, there's the other eye. And the, what, what became a realistic painting of King Philip, or whoever it was, the King of Spain at the time, suddenly started to emerge from brush strokes into an actual you know figure painting now that's because they had never seen a painting of like that before and so that's just to show shows you how a uh, conditioning of perception alters reality in very real ways and that was like one small example now to bring us to another painting there's a painting in the tate the tate modern is it tate modern it's one of the tates in London, of Salvador Dali's *The Metamorphosis of Narcissus*, it's an amazing painting by Dali, and it's in a classic sort of like atomic mystical style of surrealism that he did, and it's it's about the the, the classical Greek character of Narcissus, who was so beautiful that he all the lovers went mad because he was more in love with himself than than he could ever be with anyone else, and one day the gods punished him. By making him stare at his own reflection in a pool, he, Narcissus fell in love with his own reflection uh, until he he couldn't get that love back. You know, he couldn't get that love that love back from the reflection, and so he died in despair. And the gods uh, then created the Narcissus flower in memory of his vanity and his being self-absorbed in his, his his minuscule world of the pool, as a warning to others, I guess. And then the painting Salvador Dali. I'll try and use as a thumbnail for this. Salvador Dali has a kind of a, a kind of a, a very basic representation of Narcissus in a kind of a geometric, uh, oblique form. And then next to it is the hand of the god mirroring the same shape as the Narcissus body, but whole, instead of Narcissus having a head, it's the egg with the Narcissus flower growing out of it. Now this is about the problem was that Narcissus did not he metamorphosed, not naturally he was the, the gods punished him and the metaphor uh, he was left as a memorial his metamorphosis was in a memorial now that's very different than metamorphosis in nature okay and as this is I, i'm going to start this bear with me i know i i get i'm kind of boring sometimes and i wonder but just bear with me metamorphosis in nature is you know what that is it's when the tadpole becomes a frog or a toad that kind of thing and it changes from one complete animal to another okay and the most the most powerful example of that being the the butterfly or the moth you have the the caterpillar goes in you know spins the lab chrysalis goes into the, the larvae 
and then that metamorphosis from this like worm type thing into this spectacular creature that can fly so it's earthbound as a as a you know as a as a caterpillar it goes into a kind of a rebirthing a, a kind of a, a sarcophagus of its own making and on the other side emerges as a butterfly it's one of the most amazing things in nature okay it that that, that happens and it's it's hard to get your head around unless you use something like Rupert Sheldrake's morphic resonance. That how how all the things that could make the complexities of that could be developed purely by Darwinian evolution is just it doesn't make any sense. I mean it's just far too complex and specific. But that's for another that's for another day. Now, uh, so you just think of what that you know just imagine the transformative qu experience of the pupa inside the chrysalis as it's transforming from a, a caterpillar to a butterfly it's incredible it must be incredibly traumatic if you could get inside <laughs> caterpillar to butterfly consciousness it would also be probably incredibly psychedelic in fact years ago i took some psychedelics and i i found myself in in the psychedelic state flying with butterflies and seeing the world as they see them and they see the they saw the world in a in, in a kind of a a line art of technicolor drawings like line art drawings and that's how the, the the trip looked to me and so that i've always been interested in the concept of metamorphosis ever since then well in general and also there's the famous the, the metamorphosis the famous the famous uh, book by franz kafka about a civil servant i know traveling salesman sorry who wakes up one morning to find himself transformed into kind of like a beetle and then he has something like a kind of a life review while he's in this state because he can't get out of bed so he has a kind of life review while he's lying in the bed and that's this is kind of like a good method this is a kind of a good analogy in a conscious sense of what i think is happening in 2020 with all the stuff that's going down you hear me talking about the, the 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 shift in consciousness i absolutely believe this this is the end of the kali yuga the aeon of horus the end of the mayan you know cycle and uh, the age of aquarius even the apocalypse of the you know the the revelationists uh, you can throw all, all all these analogies and in you know sort of like metamor metaphorical infrastructures around the same concept but it's happening and this was the year it was going to happen with 2020 vision and the metamorphosis brought all of us through and those of us who who are looking back at the people around us and going fuck me what happened to you where what the do you actually believe all this crap that is yeah you out to the war zone in the hospitals but what about all the tiktok dancing nurses huh there's a war zone in the hospital sits on the paper you know and 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 their view of reality you know like you could tell them all the things like that they become obsessed with authority figures and what's happened then is we've all metamorphosized they have metamorphosized into kafka's bug trapped on the bed trying to remember its past life because it lives in terror of the future and people like us who are able to see this whole thing clearly for what it is we're in the pupa undergoing this change to to become a butterfly and that's an allegory for this new reality now there's important things we have to do here okay i was reading in the smithsonian magazine or science no scientific american that when when caterpillars entered into the metamorphosis age 70% of them die. Now, doesn't that just sound about the right percentage of the normies we're dealing with? It's like, yeah, about 30% of them uh, will, will, are like us. If they're not overtly questioning the strangeness of these times and the behavior of, of governments and all this kind of nonsense, there it's about 30% when you think about it. Now, don't, don't be judged going by me. And you and people like are talk, actively talking about and posting about it. I'm talking about oh, there's lots of there's a large silent majority who don't who are at home going this is bullshit. There's something not right here. 
all you have to do is look at the numbers who toned down the the Irish government tracing a digital passport um, video. And also, Dave Cullen pointed out a new video, a new ridiculous ad by by uh, Tesco when he showed the, the thing around the thumbs down and the comments shut off. They're the silent majority, okay? They're the ones who are not on making videos or on you. They're, they're at home and they're, they're, their social media will continue to be social media. They, but they're, they're, they're more wise than you think they are. And the 70% are the hopeless ones. The ones who have woken up to discover that they're a beetle on its back, unable to get off the bed without help. See, it's very interesting, isn't it? And that's why they're terrified. It's easier for them to lie in that bed doing a life review and waiting for someone to flip them over so they can scurry around the room again with some kind of life than go through of the the what we're going through the challenges and the pain and the spiritual and psychedelic even elements of this transformation into a butterfly now the other day i made a video about people who had the coronavirus really bad and hallucinations and things like that hitting them well i've been going online and doing some um very interesting research and one of the people i read was jack o'brien I think his name is, he's a soccer star here in Ireland. He plays for Ireland, the Shamrock Rovers, and he had the corona really bad. And he said that he was having really strange hallucinations. And I looked at others, and a lot of his hallucinations seemed to be about being in a different time slip or a different place. Like the, the hallucination, they, they're, they're, they think they're somewhere they're not. Like they might be at home, and they'll start hallucinating that they're at work. Now, this is, this is a quantum thing breaking down. This is extremely important. And this is also extremely important at this point. Why we have to be very careful. While at the same time we acknowledge the bullshit that we're having to be put through for this. And seeing the real personality of people coming to the fore. We're discovering that most men are cowards in nowadays. In the West anyway. And... Uh, and, and it, it, we must not, as well, you know, we, we have to have, like, to use, you know, in Hinduism, detachment without fixity of ego. And that is the belief that you acknowledge the shit is going down, but you don't spend too much time on it. And you don't get completely too angry about it. Because what happens then is to use a, a part, you know, a theoretical physics concept, you become quantum entangled with the problem. And eventually you can't escape. Now quantum entanglement is when two subatomic particles in a laboratory are entangled. Where that if you move them apart and shake this one, the other one will shake independent of it even though there's nothing connecting them. The US Navy have done this experiment from one side of the United States to the other. They, they entangle the two particles inside the laboratory. They remove them. They took one three and a half thousand miles away to Florida. At the precise moment the one was shook here, wherever it was in Seattle or wherever it was, the other particles in Florida shook at the same time because of quantum entanglement. We have to, in order to metamorphize from this, to quantum de-entangle from getting too bogged down in this, in, in the... In the injustice, that's what it is, of this thing, not being allowed to travel, not being allowed to move, these stupid fucking elbow things instead of a handshake and a hug. You know, this crap. And, uh, it, you know, if the, what's happened to the, the, the normies, the 70% who will not metamorphosize into a butterfly, into a new reality, who are going to find themselves, have already found themselves a beetle on their back with their legs going like this, that's because they're quantum entangled with the the negative aspects, the thing that's holding them back. And things are like, trust the science, even though we know the mass doesn't stop the virus because the, it's it's gotten worse since it. Trust the science, close the pub, stay at home, even though those things have been done and the virus has got worse. Now, the virus is definitely getting spreading more and getting worse. But interesting, the death rates are collapsing. What that tells me is that the... The, the virus has mutated, which is very common with viral infections, that it has mutated and it's now less severe. 
it's less severe. And that's a normal process with these seasonal viruses. So the second wave was a whip, although many of many people got it, very few got very sick from it and very few died from it, much less uh, because it's mutated, which means that there's no reason why we can't go back to herd, herd mentality. But no, the normies, the 70% are on their backs in their rooms, wiggling their little legs, waiting for someone to come along and free them, where the rest of us are all firmly inside chrysalis, waiting for the new reality to take us to take to take us away from all this and that's why at this point it's so important during your consciousness metamorphosis to not entangle yourself within the negative aspects and develop a kind of an okay i know it's difficult i'm not judging people or expecting high stand i get, i have a bad day now and again and i'll see some that'll infuriate me but at the same time too i have to remind myself to laugh at the absurdity of it this is where memes are so important very important you have to you know it's, do not get sucked into it people have been saying we'll need a magical or spiritual event to avoid the great reset folks it's happening you're part of it that's why you're watching this video you're part of it okay that's why you're having strange space-time experiences when you have bad cases of the coronavirus well, this is and the strange hallucinations reality is ripping in two okay it's happened before in human consciousness and it's happening again and this is what's happening and all we have to do is keep the eyes on the prize not to get too upset with what's going on with the profane like saying things they're definitely going to all you know give us the vaccine that's not helping at all okay stay away from the doom monkeys you know and what's the ones the doom monkeys are the ones who will say there's no alternative it's coming you know it's not like someone will say you know they really want to give us mandatory vaccines but we should fight it that's not a doom monkey a doom monkey is someone who goes we're we're going to be held down and there's loads of them out there there's loads of them out there and they're both in the mainstream and they're the ones who who love the, the watching the death rates on the bbc and other other web, websites every day and there's who the, there's, a, there's another they have their own conspiracy that uh, millions and millions have died and that's why city centers are empty you know they have their own conspiracy that's that's stay away from them and then there's others who you know they're going to force the vaccine and put the microchip in us and all this stuff like no no that's not going to, like you, you, that, saying it like that you'll you'll hex yourself into making it happen happen do not self-hex yourself always see yourself as a tr in a transformative state beyond those agendas beyond them you know beyond them be like the person who's in a bad relationship and is manning is you know is, is saving up money to escape they're playing the game in the situation but they're they know this they're going to get out the same as someone who's in prison and knows they could they could sit in their prison going another four years of this shit or they could think like four years and one day i'll be out of this shit that's how you decouple with the quantum entangled notion of the of the of the process this is basic stuff here it's not you know it's not it's not particularly difficult to think about we live in a reality that's so strange our brains can't even and our nervous system can't even comprehend the situation as you're watching this video now there are a billion other alternate parallel universes where this is happening and within that some of you who are watching it might be this or might be dead now or you might be not even interested in me you might actually be a scientist a government bureaucrat who wants everyone locked up and all these tangents and reality possibilities don't travel in a linear way <coughs> and this is which explains all the things in recent years like the mandela effect the mandela effect is proof that we're moving from one reality to another and we're getting little flashes of the old reality and this is why it was so powerful when people were having the hallucinations i could you know during the their their the, the, when they're recovering from the rona they were going through their metamorphosis moving from one reality to the next and the way and you know that's you know that's the way to deal with it that's the way to deal with it and um uh, I have no power, you have no power, none of us have any real power in terms of controlling the zeitgeist, okay, the matrix as a whole, 
But what we have is power within ourselves to detach from it. And that kind of makes you a god, like in the Hindu term, that we're all a god. We're all God's eyes observing and playing with the universe and looking back and collecting feedback. Lots of that stuff. And, you know, that's all you have to bear in mind. Think of the times when, you know, your good feeling never lies to you. The reason why you're on here watching this video, listening to, to me, is because at some level when this pandemic thing started or whatever, your good feeling told you. And also circumstances like the behavior of your family members or friends utterly appalled you, you know. Uh, and that's because you were basically, to use another Hindu term, you were in your dharma, okay? You were living life as you're su supposed to live it. And that's because you were going with your gut feeling. You know, you can always tell, like, like if something isn't right, it goes to disaster immediately. Like a new relationship, it's immediately full of problems. It usually doesn't, it, there's only smooth sailing if, there's, if, if everyone is in dharma. Otherwise, it's all denial and the road to the true hell is a series of ignoring and being in denial of your this it's not working this is how you, this is this is a corruption of dharma and so you're watching me now because you know that there's something if you were if you're trying to play the normie game now you'd be going nuts you'd be sitting at home every night drinking you know a bottle of whiskey you'd be going bonkers so you've already kind of you're in the pupa you're waiting to metamorphosize into another another reality and that's what's happening and it's happening slowly and look all around you the signs of it everywhere did you ever think you'd see an american election president election that would be like it is now it's surreal a president is refusing to leave because of the obvious corruption that you can see you can there's so many did you ever think you'd see a time you know, this this time before Christmas in 2019, did you actually think, just think of all the people that, that you know now, between then and now, who are like, who the fuck are you? Where did you go? That's, no, they didn't go anywhere. You're metamorphosizing. And keep your eyes on that prize. Take care. Love you all. Bye.